All right, next step. Go back to magnitude L. We can close this for the time being. I'm going up to the EQ window. Now, this is where I'm going to design the correction filter uh, in terms of its um, frequency response. So make sure you have rephase selected here in the first tab. Under target settings, make sure you have your add room curve enabled. Okay, and just mimic these settings. We have a low frequency rise start of 500. Uh, the end does not really make any difference because we're going to leave the target flat. Uh, I have a slope of half a decibel per octave. And the uh, high frequency fall and slope are the same, 500 and 0.5. Now the target level. What I can see from here is that the lowest level in my response is sitting somewhere around 66, maybe 60, let's see, 66 dBs, roughly. So I'll go ahead and change this to 66. And my, my target now goes, let me move this out of the way. Uh, my target now goes down here so that the lowest point in my frequency response is sitting on the target. Okay, so this is ready to go. Now, under here in match range, I'm going to end up doing this twice. And the reason I do it twice is just for added resolution. You don't have to do it twice. You can only do it once. It's still going to work. But I like to have a little bit more resolution in my correction filter. So I'm going to do it twice. And how I do that is simply this. Match response to target using these settings, 20 to 20K. Uh, say OK. Let REW assign the filters, and then we will analyze the results. Give it a little time. Some computers are faster than this. Okay, so we have results. Now I'm checking out these results and I can see that for the most part, the filter looks pretty good, except here in the top. I'm going to go ahead and hide everything except the predicted response. So we can see here that way up in the top above uh, let's see what uh, frequency is that. It's hiding down here and I can't see it. Let's get rid of this. Maybe I can. There we go. Uh, 9.73k. So as it goes above this, we start to see this rise in the response that we don't want to be there. That, that can't be there. Uh, we need this response to follow the target. So that means I have to modify the filter. All right. So come up here, click this button. I'll move this over here so I can see what I'm doing. And it looks like I have three empty filter slots down here, which is perfect because I need one. So I'm going to enter 20,000 here. That puts the center of the filter right here at 20K. Uh, this is the bandwidth of the filter. So something around maybe three, whoops, 3.0 would work in this case. And then I'll just slowly drag this down and we'll see what we get. Looks like five and a half, maybe five will do it. Let me close this for just a moment. See this 20 to 20 button? Let's click that so I'm not distracted by the end of the curve there. I just want to see that I'm getting this lined up pretty well and it looks like I have it. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me uh, come back in here and tweak it just a little more. Let's see what happens if I give it a bandwidth of two. See if I can flatten this out a little bit better. That looks a little better, except that I dropped this a little bit too low. Okay, so that is centered around 12.8. So I'll go ahead and give myself another filter here at 12.8. Maybe this can be two and a half. And these numbers are coming out of experience because I, uh, I've done this quite a few times. Okay, so this looks better. That looks a lot better to me. So I'm going to leave this like that. Uh, now I'll hit this 
up and down arrow button here and what that does is it reorganizes the filters in order uh, of ascending or descending in, in this case it's descending frequency from the top down okay so so close this uh, the next thing I need to do is save this filter setting okay so I I go to the save filter settings to file just to uh, satisfy my <laughs> my obsessive compulsive uh, nature here I have to make this say left front even though it really doesn't matter uh, I'll create another folder in here for uh, magnitude responses or uh, in this case it's going to be magnitude banks you'll see why uh, it's going to be banks in just a second so this is uh, magnitude left bank one and I'm going to save that okay next thing I want to do is generate measurement from predicted so click this and then close the EQ window all right so now we have an additional response down here that was just generated this is my magnitude left filter or the predicted version of the filter but what I'm going to do is call this bank 2 okay now with this one selected over here I come back into EQ now what I'm going to do is apply an additional layer of correction or an additional bank of filters over top of this to flatten it out even more all right so all I have to do is leave the settings the same because it's a copy uh, they should all have the same exact settings that I had before this is still reface uh, these settings haven't changed so I just click this again give room Q wizard a few minutes or a few seconds to correct this and what we end up with is a much tighter um, adherence to that target curve so save filter settings to file once again change this to left front say okay I'm going to change this to bank 2 save it and then I can generate measurement from predicted again I don't really have to do this but in so doing I am able to see an accurate predicted response of my left speaker all right so if I hide all of these this is what my left frequency response should look like once the filter is created okay now my my scale over here is a bit tight so I'm going to zoom in until I can see the fives at least here we go so that's a pretty tight response now all I have to do is repeat the process for the right channel right so I take magnitude R um, before I go any further though my OCD is kicking in again I have to make this somewhat reddish <laughs> okay magnitude R repeat process rephase is the equalizer settings this should all be the same I have um, 0.5 slope 0.5 slope 500 as the frequency and uh, full range speaker and all that stuff is the same this should all be the same and I have to put my target level where the other one was now as it turns out this one is a little bit lower than the other one and that's okay it actually works out better this way because I want to have the target at the lowest dip in the response and that that includes both channels right so I'm going to leave this at 66 come down here match the response to the target say okay let rew do its thing and if we have to fix the filter like we did last time we can do that for some reason it always has trouble at the top I don't know why but this is the most common area to have to go back in and fix yes it looks like I'm going to have to do it again now I suppose I could wait and see if the second layer fixes it but I like to just make sure that it's fixed I don't like to leave things to chance in this case so we'll just kind of do what I did last time it 
Doesn't look like I'm going to need to do quite as much work here. Let's just keep widening that a little bit. Maybe I can go to 1, 3. That's okay. And this again is 12 and a half. So give me a new filter. 12.5K. And we'll just boost it back up a dB and it should be fine. Nice and lined up. Cool. Reorganize my filter, my filter bank. So what happens is this gets ported directly from RumiKey Wizard into Reface. And the only way that works is if you have Reface selected as the equalizer up here. All right, so I've got this. Now I need to save my filter settings. This is going to be right front this time. Say OK. Now, magnitude right, bank 1. OK, generate measurement from predicted. Don't forget that step. OK, so now I have my magnitude right, which I'm going to move into position here. And I'll just change the name. This is going to be bank 2. Okay, now with this selected, I go back up in here and just do it again. Double check my settings, make sure that none of this has changed. It all looks like it's the same to me. Match response to target. You can see it um, getting a little tighter. The correction is getting more uh, resolved here. So adding the second bank of equalizer settings is, is a great way of, of getting more resolution into your correction filter. That's why I do it. Nice. That is a really tight, that is really tight. Okay, so I'm going to save it. Let's save it to right front. Actually, I could just do this and change the number. So I have right bank two now. Save that. Generate measurement from predicted. Close this. Come down here, grab this, and we're going to have our predicted right And color, let's give it some blue. All right. So it looks a little wonky here, but that's only because I'm still looking at the other bank. I need to be looking at predicted right and predicted left. So this is my projected correction once the amplitude filters or magnitude filters have been uh, put in place. Okay, so the next step is to focus on the vectors. Now the vectors are still uh, in desperate need of some help. Obviously, th there's a drastic difference here in between this and this. This is going to sound a lot, a lot cleaner and more balanced than this mess. So the vectors, let's go ahead and get those started. Uh, all I have to do is create one set of EQ filters for each of these, and I use the same settings as before, so 66, and everything else here looks exactly the same, which is good. This is all the same. Match response to target. Now this correction isn't going to be quite as clean, but that's okay because this has no control over the amplitude or the magnitude of the frequency response. Uh, this is dealing with phase and timing. So this is a little bit different. It doesn't matter so much that this adheres to the target as tightly as the other filters did. Uh, the, the thing here though is that we need to generate measurement from predicted so we can have a measurement that looks like this. It basically just turns that into a measurement. So now it's down here. I'm going to leave this name the way it is because I will probably go through several iterations of this before I nail down what I want to keep. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just repeat the process for vector R. So again, check and make sure that this is all the same. That should still be rephase. This should be 66. Uh, let me just point out that your target level will probably be different unless you have exactly the same room response that I had. Uh, so whatever Whatever yours happens to be is the number that you're going to use for all of the filters, all right? Every target, same level. This all looks the same, match response.
And eventually, we have our result. Oh, that one looks pretty good.